In this slide, we're going to talk about bubble sort. Uh, previously, we saw how we can do selection sort. Selection sort was an emulation of how we as humans might try to sort a given set of numbers. Now, bubble sort is something which is very logical when you're trying to solve a sort problem for a computer. A computer can look at only two numbers at any given time. So when you're asked to write a program to sort, the most logical way of writing the program would be compare two numbers at a time. And if the two numbers are not in the right order, you swap them. And that's exactly what bubble sort does. Let's look at bubble sort. So let's say I have... So what bubble sort does is to compare two numbers at a time. So we compare the first and the second number and we want to arrange the entire thing in ascending order. Is it in the right order? Yes. So we don't touch it. Next, we compare this and this. Is it in the right order? No. So we need to swap these two. So 5 comes here, 100 goes here. And then this remains the same, this remains the same, this remains the same. Next, you compare this and this. Is it in the right order? No. So you have 10 here, 100 here, and 60 here. 5 and 45 remains as it is. Now you compare these two. Again, it's not in the right order, so 60 comes here and 100 goes here. Finally, 10, 5, 45. And we've reached the end of the array. This is one pass through the array. As you can see, after the first pass, the largest number in the array has moved to the end of the array. Now, we need to again repeat the entire process starting from the beginning. Now, again, you start comparing these two. Is it in the right order? No. So you get 5 here, 45 here. 10, 60, 100. Then you compare these two in the right order? No. So 10, 45, 60, 100. And so on. So you keep repeating this process till you finish sorting the array. How do you know you sorted the array? If at any iteration or in any pass you have not swapped any of the numbers, then you finish sorting the array. So as you can see for each pass, you need a for loop. You need to go from the beginning of the array till the end of the array, for which you need a for loop. And for the various multiple passes till you finish swapping, you need a you need another loop, which ends when you have not swapped any of the numbers. So let's look at the algorithm on our slide. As you can see, first we need to repeat until no elements are swapped. That's the outermost loop. Then you have a for loop from one to n minus one. So you keep swapping every element. So you need to start checking from the first element till the last element and keep verifying if the two adjacent numbers are in the right order. If they're not, you swap them. Let's write the algorithm. Or let's, let's write the program for this now. As usual, we start with a hash include stdio.h. Just like the previous sort algorithm, this sort function too is not going to return anything, so void. It's called bubble sort, we'll just call it bubble sort. The parameters are going to be exactly the same. Star a, int i min, int i max. Now, first thing is we need the outermost loop which keeps checking that there is no swap that has happened. So we need some way of verifying whether a swap has happened or not. So we need an outermost while loop. We'll see how we can write the condition for the while loop later. Let's write a single pass first. So for the single pass, we need a for loop. So we have a for i is equal to i min, i is less than or equal to i max, i plus plus. We need to go through the entire array. So it goes from i min to i max, we need an integer i. Now we need to compare two adjacent numbers. Because I'm always comparing two adjacent numbers, I can actually start i from i min plus one. That is the second number. It's because I would be comparing the second number with the first number every time. So I'll compare the current number with its previous number. And if they're in the wrong order, you swap those two and go to the end of the array. So to begin with, if I start with i equal to i min, which will be zero, I can have nothing to compare against. So I always start with one. So I can compare a of one and a of zero. 
So you say if a of i is less than a of i minus 1, then they're not in the right order. Then you say swap a comma i comma i minus 1. The swap function will be exactly similar to the one we did in the previous program. So we can just copy paste that swap. So this is our innermost loop or the for loop, which is what one pass consists of. So every pass requires a loop to go from i min to i max. And if we do not have any two adjacent numbers in the right order, then we swap those two numbers. Now we need to keep repeating this or have multiple passes till we made sure we haven't done even a single swap. So where does the swap happen? The swap happens inside this if statement. So if we ever enter the if statement means we perform the swap. So we can just set a particular variable here, let's say swapped equal to true, which means we perform the swap. We have to define true, so let's say hash define true as one, hash define false zero. Now we need another variable called swapped. So if we ever enter the if statements, we so if we enter the if statement means we have performed a swap, which means we need to perform the next pass also. So this while loop will keep running as long as swapped is equal to true. Or we can just say while swapped. The same thing because swapped true means one. So if swapped is set to true, this will be one. So while one means it'll enter the loop. But we need to set it to false at some point. So we'll first set it to false. So when we start with the loop, we're setting swap to false. If we perform any kind of a swap operation, then we set swap to true. Now there's still one problem left with the program that is initially swapped is not set to anything. So when you say while swap to start with, it can be any junk value and that's not good. So one way of doing this is to initialize this to true. So that way it will enter the loop at least once or we can have a do while loop because we need to execute this at least once before we do the check. So you can say do while swapped. I just notice a missing semicolon here. And done. That's your bubble sort function. Now we need a function to swap and the main, which we'll just copy from our previous program. That's the swap and the main. The only difference is instead of calling selection sort, now we shall be calling bubble sort. And we need to declare the swap function. So I'll just copy this as a function declaration. Let's try and compile this program. No errors or warnings. Let's run it. How many numbers? Five. I'll just give the numbers in reverse order. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, it works. Let's try another random example five numbers, enter the numbers 43, 56, 12, 10, 100. 10, 12, 43, 56 and 100. This program works too. Isn't this simple? Because we know the computer can just verify two numbers at a time. We verify two adjacent numbers. If they're not in the right order, swap them and keep doing this until we have the entire sorted list. So that's bubble sort for you.